let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you very much for your word as it comes to us now. We desire this word of yours, the entrance of which giveth light and understanding to the simple. We truly give light and understanding to us as we listen. And plant it in our hearts that as it comes, Father, life from above will be injected into us. That as the year draws to our close, we'll be full of this life that comes from you. And to your honor and glory, the year will end. Thank you, Father, as you speak now through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's have our seats in the presence of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. And so, how are you today? It has to be fine because God is on the throne. And for as long as God is on the throne, and for those of us who read every day with Jesus, the current edition, I think yesterday or Sunday, it was talking about trials and tribulations that come the way of man. And that we could be knocked down, but not knocked out. Eh? I caught that when, as I was reading that uh, commentary. He said, we could be knocked out, we could be knocked down, but not knocked out. I think a boxing tournament had just taken place this past night between one uh, Joseph and uh, who? We don't have boxers here. Go and check. I know that man has created a record now like Mohammed Ali and some others who are about to reclaim their world uh, title. Now, just in the ring, you could be knocked down as many times a boxer can fall. But once you are knocked out, that is the end. So the devil knocks us down from time to time. But because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, he can never knock us out. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And so that calls for celebration again and again. That is why they have been amados. Because they have been knocked down several times, but they have not been knocked out. They can celebrate and call us to thank God today for testimonies upon their lives. The old boys of James Wedge, many times the devil had knocked you down, but you have never been knocked out. And that's why you can gather today and say, let's celebrate the goodness of the Lord upon, this, upon our lives. So, Again, I say, lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So we'll continue to celebrate God's goodness upon our lives, whether the devil likes it or not. And looking at our theme, or the theme for this Sunday, the bulletin in our hands, it says, the word of God. The word of God. Quickly, let's turn to the epistle we read just now as a second Timothy chapter 3 and look at verse 11 verse 16 rather second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. As Timothy is speaking there, talking about the word of God, that this word, as we find it in the Bible, is not ordinary words we have here, Genesis to Revelation. He says, God breathed. 
It is the breath of God. That's to say there is already life. Where there is breath, there is life. So the word of God is life. Actually, in the Old Testament, the word Daba, Daba of God, is used 394 times. And it's of a divine communication which comes from God to men. In the form of commandment, and we have the Ten Commandments. We say, Thus said the Lord, the prophets will keep come and we keep coming and talking. Thus said the Lord. The form of commandment or prophecy or warning or encouragement. This word that God, God breathes out, it comes in form of commandment, comes in form of prophecy, it comes with warning. At times, and at other times, it comes with encouragement. That's the word of God. So the usual formula is the word of Yahweh. The word of Yahweh. The usual formula is the word of Yahweh. And sometimes the word is seen as a vision. It's seen as a vision. When you look at Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1, it says, The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. So this word would be a vision and help us see clearly the word of God. Yahweh's word, I said, the word of God could also often said to be the word of Yahweh. Yahweh's word is an extension of the divine personality. When you see the word of God, then you are seeing the person of God invested with divine authority. When you talk about the word of God, there is authority. And you know that authority is more than power. You may have power, but you may not have authority. And so, by authority, that power can be silenced. So, the devil has power, but he does not have authority. Praise the Lord. That's the word of God. So, and is to be heeded by angels and men. This word of God. To be heeded. To be obeyed by angels. Angels and men. Now, see. What is in Psalm 103, verse 20? Psalm 103, verse 20. It says, Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word. Obey the voice of his word. So when we speak God's word, angels obey. Praise the Lord. That's the word of God. Read power. This word of God stands forever. It stands forever. Look at what it says in Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Look at verse 8. If you are there, it says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. So, this same word we have used yesterday is as potent today and remains potent for tomorrow's use. It doesn't expire. Praise the Lord. That's the word of God for us. That's our theme carries this morning. So, it stands forever. And once uttered, it cannot return unfulfilled. Some of us don't know this. And most times, when we pray, we pray with our own words. But it can be so powerful when you pray using God's word. That is why we often teach that as many scriptures store in your head, memory verse store in your head for the rainy day 
so that when the devil attacks the next moment is to release that word that never comes back empty it will always accomplish the purpose for which it is sent isaiah isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 says that so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth it shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which i purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which i sent it so when we call for bible study we call for sunday school some of us see it to be nothing you just want to attend the service show your face dance and give the offering you can give i may not be very very attentive in the place of studying god's word god's word is our weapon that's why the bible tells us that the weapons we fight with are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds and that's how the, the lord jesus pulled down the strongholds of the devil when you read luke chapter 4 verse 1 following the same thing we find in matthew chapter 4 verse 1 following talking about the temptation of jesus christ Toss stone into bread say it is written come from here said, it is written bow down and worship me it is written god's word and we know with god's word devil the devil was defeated by jesus that 40 days of waiting on the lord we need god's word to continue to fight the devil and beat him hands down because each time we release it it goes to accomplish that purpose for which it was sent it is sent and when we read god's word we see that indeed when it goes it can go like a hammer but jeremiah tells us that the word of god is like a hammer it can go like fire Isaiah tells us it's like fire. It can go like a sword. Peter writing to the Ephesians tells us it's like a sword. So you may never know what God will convert the word of God into when it's going against your enemy. When God sees that it has to be fire now with which he will bring down the, the devil, as you release the word, it goes with as fire. It is God's choice to say, let it go as a sword and it pierces. It is God's choice to say, let it go like a hammer. And you know what a hammer can do? Hit hammer on the head of somebody. All your senses are gone. That is the word of God for us that we are examining this morning. So it is used as a synonym for the law. This word, as a synonym for the law, Torah. Torah of God. In Psalm 119, you will see, keep repeating, so many things about, it's a law, it's a testimony, it's a this, the Torah. So where alone is reference is to a written rather than a spoken message. So that is the Torah. The Bible there is written down. But we can also speak the word of God. And coming to the New Testament, we'll be talking about the Old Testament. Coming to the New Testament, it translates into the terms Logos, this word of God, and Rema. Because Logos is the written, Rema is the spoken. So it is written as it is in the Bible, then we, and that is the Logos. And then when we speak it, it is Rema, and it remains undiluted. It still goes as it is. God's word. Praise the Lord. Children of God, praise the Lord. And I want us to know that supremely this word is used of the message of the Christian gospel. This gospel we preach, this word of God is used. When we see what is in Mark, chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible says there, it says, and many were gathered together so that they, there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word. 
to them. That's the gospel. That's what you are listening now. That's Jesus. Preaching the word to them. So the word of God, indeed, is the gospel that we are preaching to you now as you listen. And when you go on to preach this same gospel, it is this same word that goes. Hear what Romans chapter 10, verse 8 says. It says this, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we proclaim. That's the gospel. It's near you. It's not just near you. It's already in your heart. That's the good news. For us children of God, that is how it should be. The word of God should always be near us. The word of God should always be in our hearts. Wherever we go, we are carrying it. Story is told of a man who had a, a bad news. Bad news was broken to him in church like this. As the bad news came, the man exclaimed, you want to hear the exclamation? You want to hear the exclamation? The Yorubas will understand. He exclaimed, Shokpono! What is the meaning of Shokpono? The God of smallpox. That was his exclamation. But we know if you are carrying Jesus in your heart, what you will just say is, Jesus! We may never know what comes out of our mouth from time to time. It tells what is in our heart. But that is not to say that some who call their name Jesus, Jesus, it is from the head and not also from the heart. I want us to know that this word of God, we need to carry it in our heart. It has to be near us every day and every time. And do you know where you will tell that really the word of God is near you and is in your heart when you go to sleep? When you go to sleep. Because when we go to sleep, our body is at rest, our spirit man is at work. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 verse 16, it says, the spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. When you go to sleep, if you are born again, if the spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God, when you go to sleep and your spirit is at work, this same word will be with you. And that is why you see people, even in their dreams, with nightmares, when they come, when the devil comes, you see them pleading the blood of Jesus in their dreams. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. And you just wake up suddenly. It's the blood of Jesus you are pleading because of an attack that was coming. Some others, Jesus, as the oppression comes, you may just be struggling. These forces are real. And they come. They want to press you. That is why some are pressed and they never wake up. You say, but it's like, went to bed. Oh, hell and had you. You know, wake again. Oh. What is the problem? Forces. Forces of darkness. But if you carry the word of God in your heart and it's always near you, even in that state of sleep, when your body is at rest, you are conscious of your environment, your spirit man is still at work. And you say, Jesus, that Jesus with which you wake up, you may never know the calamity that has befallen the kingdom of Satan. Destruction. Destruction. If only God will open your eyes to see what has happened by the mention of that name, Jesus, you will, you, 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 you will, you will, you will get to draw closer and closer to this God anymore. After the, the same Bible tells us that at the mention of that name, Jesus, every knee does what? Bows. Every tongue does what? Confess. What is that confession? That Jesus is a Lord. That is it. So in that small talk in your dream, Jesus, you may never know. So many things have transpired in the spirit realm. Because you are carrying the word in your heart. And is near you, as we see from Romans chapter 10, verse 8. So, our Lord spoke of the word of God in the parable of the sower. When you look at that parable of the sower, 
You see the word of God. That is coming now. That is how it's coming. Some will just fall by the wayside. Don't know what the word of God will do to you now. Or do for you now. Some, as the word is coming out, it will fall by the wayside. And the birds will just come and pick them up. It will never bear fruit. Nothing. Some will fall on hard ground. And as it falls on a hard ground, it tries to penetrate. Goes down, try. Because the ground is scorchy. The roots cannot go down. It with us. So it will not fall among thorns. And they are choked. Why some others fall on fertile ground? They bear fruit, 30 fruit, 60 fruit, 100 fruit. God's word. So you will see from time to time when people say testimonies, testimonies. Let's call for testimonies. You see some people putting up their hands each time. Testimony, I have a testimony. Another one, testimony. Another one, testimony. And you'll be asking yourself, me, I don't get testimony, self. Why me, I don't testify? Check. Maybe the word of God, the way it has come to you, is like the one that has fallen on the ground. The birds have taken it away. That was the devil himself. On a hard soil. And just for some time, you take it in, you rejoice. Mm, I cannot endure this. It falls away. Because you are not committed to the things of the Spirit. Those that fall among the thorns and so on. Those are the cares and riches of this world. You go here, you go there, you are rushing, you are scrambling for money and so on. Promotion, this and that. You do all sorts of things. Oh, it is God. For those who consistently, consistently run the Christian race. In trials and tribulations, they remain focused. You see the word coming 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold, bearing fruit, testimonies. Where do you stand in all this? This word of God, that is what He does for us. When you look at the synoptic gospels, I mean, say the synoptic uh, gospel, rather, gospels, that is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you know. Jesus always used the plural of his message, my words, my words, my words, my words. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Say something to us there. Matthew 24, verse 25. Are we there? Matthew 24, 35. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. My words. Jesus continued to speak to us. As I'm speaking now, he's speaking. If today is not your first day in church, you have heard this word again and again. My words. My words. They keep coming. They keep coming. In your closet, at your family altar, my words keep coming. What do you do with the word of God? When it comes to the fourth gospel, that is the gospel according to St. John, as we read just now, you will see Jesus saying some things there. He said, but on verse 38, verse 38 of John chapter 5, we read from this morning, John chapter 5, look at verse 38. He said, but you do not have his word abiding in you, because whom he sent, whom, because whom he sent, him you do not believe. Look at 39. You set the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me, and you, and, come again. But you are not willing to come to me, that's verse 40, that you may have life. That's Jesus talking about there. So, beloved, what are you doing with God's word? Remember, this is Advent season. Jesus is coming again. He's coming again. 
without dispute, is coming again. His first coming was to bring salvation. His second coming is to judge the world. And he has given us his word that will never pass away. What are we doing with this world? Is it near us? Is it in our hearts? We need to meditate on it day and night, like Joshua says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. And observe to do according to all, not some, that are written therein, and you may that you may have, that you may be prosperous and have good success. Beloved, what success are you celebrating? There's an adjective that qualifies success in that Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The adjective good. That's to say there's bad success. Not every success that calls for celebration. You was in the university and you cheated to pass that exam. It's bad success. But you have a certificate. Quite all right. It's bad success. You has been promoted in that office because you needed to bribe your way through. You needed, you needed to oppress some others, sideline them to get up there. And you come for Thanksgiving. It is bad success, not good success. You who has made it, quote and unquote, in business, you have become a billionaire. And your business is flourishing. But we know that it's ill gotten wealth. All sorts of tricks, all sorts of maneuvering, manipulations. Those who are shifting in all sorts of things. Can you imagine? And somebody was saying, ah, Nigerians can do everything and anything. When it was reported recently, this is a new week, last week, that casket for dead bodies were found to be containers for bags of rice. That's what some people use to smuggle rice casket they open it now let us see the dead body for bags of rice if that rice those bags of rice succeed succeeded in getting to their destinations money bad success we know the evil that is going on you treat and treat and treat you are not getting well adulterated Dogs, drugs, where they put ordinary powder inside capsule containers. And you say, this is capsule, this is ampicillin, this is this, this is that. With confidence, you will take this drug according to prescription by your doctor. You are not getting well. You don't know you are drinking poison. Some people are getting rich. What? A lot of money. Bad success. Tell me your success. And it's outside God's will. It is bad success. Only the word of God. The word of God as we find here can bring good success. Beloved, that's the word of God for us this morning. I want us to also know that the word of God, this word is the word of life. There's one of the denominations that is called Word of Life. Word of Life Bible Church. That is it. It is from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 16. Holding fast to the word of life. So that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. This word, if you hold on to it, you are holding on to the word of life. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 is the word of truth. In him you also, Ephesians 1 verse, ter verse 13, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed 
with the promised Holy Spirit, the word of truth. Everything about life that you want to find that is true, this word of God will guide you. Because the devil is the father of lies. But this word of truth will always guide us and indeed guard us against falsehood. The word of truth. Just as we saw just now, this word is the word of salvation. So we read just now from this Ephesians. It's the word of salvation. But look at Acts chapter 13, verse 26. Acts 13, 26 says, Brothers, sons of the family of Abraham and those among you who fear God, to us, to us has been sent the message of this salvation. This word. For as many that are born again, this word of God brought that birth. For as many that are listening to me now and will be born again, this same word will bring that salvation. As we go out to preach, this word is what brings salvation to people. Born again. This word. And lastly, I speak. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. It says this, that is, in Christ, God was reconciling the word to himself. This word of God is the word of reconciliation. Can bring us many who are evil. This word can reconcile armed robbers to God. Ritualists, assassins, reconcile to God. Kidnappers, this word. Boko Haram. This word. And the question that comes now has this word reconciled you to this God? That is the question we should ask ourselves now. This word of God that can reconcile the word to God. Because we know, going back to the book Genesis, how sin entered this world. And God became sad that He made man. Because the imagination, the inclination of his heart is continually evil. And God was saying, ah, I feel bad. I'm pained in my heart that I made man. See him, all his imagination in time, evil. But Jesus, when he came, he came with this word. And now we can be reconciled to him. Are you reconciled to him? Are you reconciled to him? Let us stand up. Let us stand, please. Make that a prayer point now. Pray to the Lord from this place. In Christ, God was reconciling the word to himself. In Christ, God was reconciling the word. The world, this world we are, we are, born, we are born into. And we are the people that make up this world. Have you been reconciled? Say something to the Lord. If your heart, in your heart of heart, you know you have been reconciled, you say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this reconciliation. My prayer now is that it be sustained. I will never go back to the world. More grace upon my life. That should be your prayer now. That this word of yours that reconciled me to, to you will continue to be in my heart. So I've seen just now, the word is near us and it's in our heart. Pray that this word will be sufficient for you. The word of God, let it be sufficient for you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You say, Lord, this is my desire. 
I will continue to live by your word. I will continue to order my life around your word. Help me, Lord. So that when the trumpet sounds one day, I will truly be an heir, joint heir with your son, children of the kingdom that will be with you forever and ever. Thank God he has done it. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you, Father. Your word has gone forth. This word of yours, that is spirit and life, the entrance of which giveth light and understanding to the simple. This word of yours, which is not the word of man, which Lord our God has power. In it we find authority over the powers of this world, over the principalities, rulers, and darkness of darkness of this world. Our prayer is that Lord we will be richly, Lord, blessed with your word every day. Thank you, Father, as we live by your word. Thank you, Father, as in your word that we live. We we'll continue to glorify you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thy word of God is sufficient unto me. Thy word of God is sufficient unto me. Thy word of God is sufficient unto me. Thy word of God is sufficient unto me.